Hey folks, good morning and welcome to another episode of Motorcyclist MC Commute. Today we're going to be riding on Suzuki's 2021 DRZ400 SM. That's right, Suzuki's still making its old carburetor equipped 400 SM into the North American market. We're going to ride it today. Well folks, there it is, Suzuki's 2021 DRZ400 SM. This is a street legal 400cc super moto bike from Suzuki. This motorcycle originally debuted in dual sport configuration in the year 2000, so 21 years ago with the DRZ400. A few years later, Suzuki made this asphalt specification machine, traded out the dual sport wheels and tires for a set of 17 inch rims with Dunlop's D208 Supermoto specific tire. These wheels actually are not tubeless, they are a tubed design. But anyways, this is a street legal Supermoto motorcycle that Suzuki has been making for a long time. Yes, it is very old in Suzuki's model lineup, but it still gets the job done. I like the colors on this thing, this 2021 colorway. Talk about making an old bike look new. You know, whether it's Suzuki, Kawasaki, Honda, Yamaha, all the major Japanese manufacturers have excellent graphic design departments, and they really know how to pick those color combos and make the bike look modern and cool. Now, the thing I like about this bike is how nowadays retro bikes are in. And this bike looks retro because it's, it's from the 2000 model year. Look at that rectangular old Miami Vice style headlight, the dirt bike like front uh, fender, the RM sourced dirt bike fork and the RMZ sourced swing arm and rear suspension. A very retro looking bike. But enough talking about it, let's swing a leg over this thing and see what it's like to ride. All right guys, a good old fashioned mechanical key for the DRZ 400 SM. Push the ignition starter button and away we go. Now, it's crazy to think, but this motorcycle is carbureted. It has an old school McCuny carburetor used to mix the fuel and air mixture. And because it's a carburetor, it can take a little bit of finessing to start. Now, this motorcycle still uses a carburetor because it can. Zuki is able to pass emissions and noise standards with the use of the carburetor. It's actually added a PAIR, an air injection system into the exhaust to help get favorable fuel economy and make those emission standards. It also has a neat diaphragm inside the carburetor to help make it smooth, smooth running. Sitting on this motorcycle, well, it feels like a dirt bike. That's because it is a dirt bike. This 2021 DRZ 400 SM is built around Suzuki's 400 DRZ, which it, it originally unveiled for the 2000 mile year, so 21 years ago. Now, Suzuki made this DRZ400. The whole point of this bike was to make a simple, affordable, and reliable motorcycle that's easy to ride, didn't cost a lot, and was tough. And that character lives on in today's 2021. DRZ 400 SM. Obviously, I really like the ergonomics. I'm a big dirt bike guy. I love how slim this machine is. I love the Renthal fat bar. This is a nice handlebar. The bend 
is nice and upright. It doesn't have too much rearward sweep, nor is it too forward. This is a good handlebar bend. It really affords a commanding stance. The foot pegs are a little bit small for my liking, but they're okay. Definitely if this bike was mine, I would install larger foot pegs. I love a big set of meaty foot pegs. It gives you a good base to stand up on and just gives you more control. Not so much on the street, but definitely when you're riding on, on, on dirt, it definitely helps. But still, all in all, whatever helps on dirt usually helps on street too. So bigger foot pegs would be nice. Let's try to get this green light, guys. This DRZ400 is powered by Suzuki's 398cc dual overhead cam liquid cooled single. This thing has a huge piston, huge diameter piston, not very much stroke, but this engine is just, it is just tough. Looking at the service manual for this bike, Suzuki recommends oil changes every 4,000 miles. That's right. Other manufacturers, big singles, need quite a bit more maintenance. Yes, a lot of them make more power than this modest power output DRZ 400 SM, but even though the, the power output's a little bit modest, it pays dividends in just how reliable the engine it is and how little it needs in terms of maintenance. On the dyno, this bike puts out right around 32 horsepower. Let's go around these guys. This is one of the advantages of a small, skinny little motorcycle is being able to zip around traffic. So we're going to take advantage of that here. Right around 32 horsepower to the business end of the 17 inch Dunlop D208 Super Moto specific tire. This tire is a very old tire in Dunlop's model lineup, but it was specifically made for this DRZ 400 SM. The interior of the tire's carcass is very smooth and it's smooth so it can be compatible with a tube because this motorcycle has non-tubeless wheels. That means there's tubes inside the wheel that are used to inflate the actual tire. So the interior of the Dunlop tire is smooth just so you don't have any problems with with abrasion against the tube. Now these days most supermoto style bikes do not have or they actually employ wheels with tubeless design. Tubeless design allows you to have less reciprocating mass so the wheel and tire combo is usually lighter. It also allows you to have greater feedback at the business end of the tire because there's less stuff going on. It's just tire, air, rim instead of tire, tube, air, rim. But other people like tube, tube style setups because if you get a flat tire, you just put a new tube in and away you go. So I'm more of a tubeless guy, but it's still cool that uh, there are different options out there and Suzuki does it the old-fashioned way. Go figure. Five-speed transmission chain final drive on the left-hand side of the bike. And this thing is definitely zippy in the lower gears. Top speed's good for right around 93 miles per hour, which is actually pretty good for a, for a 398cc water-cooled single engine vibration is fairly muted. I know I've ridden other manufacturers big displacement singles lately and they have more vibration than this thing. This thing is pretty smooth running. Of course running on the freeway 
is not going to be the DRZ 400 SM's favorite line of work, but it's a lot less buzzy, a lot more capable than, let's say, the CRF 450R. I'm sorry, the CRF 450L Dual Sport, which we rode a couple episodes ago. Suspension. This motorcycle rolls on an inverted fork that is based off Suzuki's old RM250 two-stroke motocross bike. It's an older style fork, but it does offer compression and rebound damping adjustment. There's also these clever air bleed screws atop each fork leg so you can release the pressure from inside the fork leg. I really like those simple little screw bleed valves. I wish all bikes had them, even street bikes. All right, guys, we're gonna take a little bit of a different route here and explore the handling potential of this DRZ 400 SM on this curvy road. This is perfect for super motoing. 322 pounds with a 2.6 gallons of fuel filled to the brim. And this motorcycle feels very light, very maneuverable, very easy to put where you want. You definitely feel some of the big bumps through the suspension, but in all the other smaller stuff, the suspension goes over the bumps fairly well. It offers a pretty decent ride. The brakes on this bike, hydraulic disc brakes, front and rear, there is no ABS. The front brake has enough power to get the vehicle slowed down, but you can really tell that this master cylinder just doesn't have the power to really push fluid through it. You really have to use the brake. You have to pull back on the brake lever quite a bit for the motorcycle to really slow down. That's another area I would probably upgrade. So foot pegs and a more heavy duty master cylinder that can push more fluid through it. Five speed transmission moves between each of its cogs well. Nice positive shift engagement. There's a light here so you know when you are in neutral. Let's see if it'll do a wheelie. Oh, that wasn't so awesome. There we go, that's better. That's better, yep, that's good. Yeah, wheelie is real nice. Definitely have to find the balance point on this bike quick because it just doesn't have that much power as compared to a 450cc uh, supermoto or dirt bike. But if you get the front wheel up quick and you find the balance point and you aren't afraid to shift in the air, this thing will be very good at doing wheelies. Great, another corner. I love corners on this bike. The mirrors on this machine do a nice job of showing what is going on behind you. And away we go guys, the mirrors. I love the view that they give behind you. I like how they also rotate this way and that way. They have a lot of adjustment function which is a nice subtle detail. The brake lever, the position of the front brake lever and of course the rear brake pedal can be adjusted. This has a dirt bike style adjuster where there's a little lock nut and you move the lock nut either in or out to adjust the position of the lever fore or aft. Right now we are riding on the highway at freeway speed 75 miles per hour and we're in top gear right now and this engine's not buzzing crazy. It's running at a very relatively low RPM for a big displacement single. And it's actually pretty capable for 
this speed. Again, it's not the kind of bike you want to be riding hundreds of miles on on the freeway, but for quick little freeway jaunts, for 15, 20 mile free, freeway jaunts, I think this bike will be okay for that. We spent some time riding this thing at the Supermoto track at the go-kart track in Paris, California, and this motorcycle is neat because for $7,500 you can buy it, you ride it to the go-kart track, you do some laps on it, and you ride it home. You don't have to load it in the back of your truck. Yes, it's nowhere nearly as capable as a modern 450cc Supermoto competition bike, but it doesn't need to be. This is a street legal road going motorcycle. So for someone who wants to be able to run errands on it and have some fun on the weekend, bring it to the go-kart track and scuff up some knee pucks, this motorcycle would be a good option. And again, it's only $7,500. So it's not going to break the bank. For comparison, the 450 SMR KTM we rode recently is over $11,000. So $3,500 more and it's not even street legal. So this motorcycle definitely caters to, to a certain type of customer. Love the action of the clutch. The clutch lever is not too heavy, nor is it too wimpy. Feels very nice. And if you were a novice rider, I wouldn't hesitate to recommending this bike to you. It's light. The controls are easy to use. Yes, it's a little bit tall, but because it rolls on 17 inch Excel wheels, it is a little bit lower or closer to the ground as compared to a dual sport DRZ 400. So this bike would actually be a pretty good entry level motorcycle. It also doesn't take up very much room in the parking lot or garage and that is all awesome in my book. We rode this motorcycle after dark and of course because this bike doesn't have LED headlamp the performance after dark isn't as good as we would like. This bike could definitely benefit from an LED headlamp. Now it's not terrible you can still see where you're going but it's not this motorcycle does not illuminate the road ahead like a modern LED setup the non LED taillight and turn signals are a little bit of a bummer too you got to remember there are bikes out there that cost less than $4000 that have full LED lighting. So if those bikes can have full LED lighting, so can this DRZ 400 SM. But to be fair, if it did have those headlamps, it would take away from its retro 80s style vibe, which I kind of like right now. This LCD gauge cluster Again, fits in the retro theme, but at least it has an LCD readout. Speedometer, trip op, trip functions, clock with second hand, which is kind of cool, so you know exactly what time it is. You could also calibrate this, this speedometer for the circumference of your tire. So if you fit a different brand of street bike tires on this DRZ 400 SM. You can program the computer here so it still registers the correct mileage and speed just in case the tire circumference is a little bit larger or a little bit smaller, which is kind of a neat touch. You gotta remember this is an old school motorcycle with an old school speedometer driven cable so it's got a hub that powers the speedometer we haven't seen that kind of feature on a bike in a long time 
Well, guys, there it is, Suzuki's 2021 DRZ 400 SM. I do like this motorcycle. Obviously, it is very, very old and long in the tooth, but it's an easy bike to ride. It looks kind of cool and it's retro vibes. It doesn't cost a lot of money. And for an urban, fun little urban bike that's not too sporty yet too dull, I think this motorcycle will fit in very well for that purpose. All right, guys, let's do some Q&A real quick here. Lots of comments and interest on this motorcycle. This or a Panigale V4R. Panigale V4R, duh. What most shows this bike's age after the choke? What I would say shows this bike age is that speedometer cable. Look at that thing. Like, what new motorcycle has a speedometer cable on it? Like, none of them. So that definitely shows its age. How does this compare to the KLX 300 SM? That bike just came out. We haven't ridden it. You know, this motorcycle is obviously going to have an extra 100 cc's of displacement, which is really going to help. These little bikes need to have as much displacement as possible. Is there ever going to be a DRZ 450 SM with EFI and a six-speed transmission? I don't think so. You never know what Suzuki holds in its cards, but I wouldn't expect to see that motorcycle. A toolkit, how refreshing. What's included inside that toolkit is a Phillips screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, a pair of pliers, some wrenches, some attachments so you can get leverage on the wrenches, and the owner's manual. So it's nice that there's some tools on here so you can do some roadside repairs <clears throat> if you have to. Another neat feature is on the other side of this motorcycle, right here there is three zeus style fasteners you probably saw them in the intro they actually didn't because you would have had to flip it around let's flip this bike around voila much better three zeus fasteners right there and you can release those fasteners the twist and that gives you access to the air filter just like a ktm or husqvarna motorcycle but I think Suzuki did it first. All right, guys, that's enough Q&A. Would I spend my $7,500 on this DRZ 400 SM? I personally wouldn't. Even though I appreciate this motorcycle and I like its retro vibe, I need something that has more power and is more functional. I would get bored of this motorcycle very quickly. But at the same time, if you're the kind of rider who just wants some mellow and easy to ride street legal super motorbike that doesn't have a lot of money to spend and you want something that's reliable with good aftermarket part support, you gotta remember, Suzuki's been making this thing for 21 years, the DRZ400. So there's a lots of part lots of accessories lots of things and goodies that you can put on this bike to customize it and if you're that type of rider i think you're gonna do well with this drz 400 sm well guys that's a wrap hop on to motorcyclistonline.com to read my review and we'll see you guys next time thank you for watching this content